CNBC's Jim Cramer is calling XRP a scam. Ripple provides more updates on the SEC lawsuit. Big FUD attack, a big war going against the XRP community because they do not want you to own XRP. Guys, let's get right into it. Real quick, as Jim Cramer is saying XRP is a scam, uh, the chart actually pops up a bullish engulfing here. Uh, as you guys know, in the last few videos, we have been monitoring this general daily zone here of the nonstop higher lows that have been kind of commencing there. And I am projecting XRP in the next week or so, maybe next few days, it is 100% like 100 priming itself to get the blast off back to half dollar XRP. As you guys know, right there was the whole Sam Bankman Freed FTX bullshit. But now, after forming this kind of um, comeback scenario here, it's really looking like XRP is going to get the blast off very soon and reclaim the half dollar XRP location. You really can't argue with me here. Um, looking at the XRP chart, Coming back down to local demand, showing immense signs of strength, getting a bullish engulfing as Kramer is calling XRP a scam. We might just be a few days away from half dollar XRP. And I know, okay, so what? XRP 50 cents, no big deal. But you know what? Half dollar per XRP, if you've been accumulating XRP for years at the sub 20 cent range, very, very good gains. Let's go ahead and look at this, guys. The Matrix, I don't mean to sound like Andrew Tate here, but the Matrix does not want you to own XRP. There has been kind of a FUD battle going on right now. As you're going to see in this video, a lot of people attacking XRP. It's because, especially when it's the mainstream media, uh, and honestly, I would consider Coindesk a mainstream media. You know, general cryptocurrency news outlets, um, I don't think they're mainstream media, but Coindesk is owned by, I don't know who, but Coindesk is owned by some big company. I know that for a fact that Coindesk does have ownership from some big boy company. And again, on that Coindesk article, uh, Ripple actually claps back here with a four tweet thread. But first off, let's just go ahead and watch this little clip from Jim Cramer. Uh, and honestly, Cramer, um, maybe he could take back these statements he said about XRP because uh, he's putting it in the same basket as Solana, whose network crashes like every few months uh, and actually goes down for three days. And he's putting it in the basket of Dogecoin. I mean, it's kind of, I think, very disrespectful to put XRP in the same basket as Solana and Dogecoin, which is very much below XRP, both in market cap and fundamentally. Uh, so Kramer here, uh, he's talking like he's, you know, just a few hours off having, having a couple of Jack and Cokes. This guy looks hungover and a headache like crazy, and he just got forced to do this segment. But nonetheless... Let's listen to Jim Cramer, the person who is bullish on Bear Stearns, Enron, and Theranos, what he thinks about XRP. Engine check in with Jim Cramer. Uh, Jim, what would you like to talk about this morning? Well, I think we have to distinguish between the... I mean, dude, this guy is either drunk or coming off of being drunk. But I'm telling you, there's got to be a couple of Jack and Cokes in his system. ...notion of what blockchain is. No one thinks blockchain is bad. I, I, and what happened here, and I thought you guys did an amazing job. I... I think Kevin O'Leary's caught up in what I would describe as a suboptimal situation. And I think you did your best to get to the bottom of it, but it, the whole thing seems so bottomless that I don't know how to fathom it. So it's funny how when cryptocurrency is up and breaking all-time highs and the news is just a big media storm around cryptocurrency price, it's funny how when cryptocurrency is breaking all-time highs, all of a sudden Kramer is just bullish on crypto telling you to buy. And then as it's down in the gutter at local you know, local demand zones at the bottom, uh, all of a sudden he's just um, telling you to sell your crypto. Kind of, kind of funny how that works, huh? Kramer is famously um, always been saying the wrong things because he is a mouthpiece for the mainstream media and i believe kramer's role in mainstream media is telling retail what not to do which is gonna it's gonna make the bigger boys money when a stock or a crypto or a commodity is at all-time highs he's screaming at you to buy it because what are the big boys doing they're gonna sell and take the liquidity when it's at the bottom and he's calling it bottomless cryptocurrency is crashing stocks are crashing he's telling you to sell which makes it better for the big boys because when retail's selling they are buying i mean this guy supported theranos he was telling you not to sell bear stearns he was telling you to buy enron so i think uh you know i think we're on the right path here guys okay yeah i, I mean it's we're, we're all trying to figure out what happened i think kevin's right it's going to be years that we're hearing about this once bankruptcy courts get involved um, it's going to be a very long unwinding. I, I, look, I, 
I don't know about Bitcoin. I think that one's different than a lot of the other coins, but I think the marks. Oh yeah, Bitcoin is so much different than their coins. I mean, some of these people that talk for mainstream media about crypto are absolutely clueless. That came with some of these things are enough to leave you scratching your head. Well, everything you said was true. I mean, at the end, I mean, I, I think that Kevin said, Dude, this guy is so drunk. Oh, my God. Said that everything you said was true. I mean, the problem is... Dude, everything you said is true. This, this guy has for sure got a blood alcohol content of at least 0.08. Everything everyone says is true about this, except for it's just a giant con. And remember, the con is not... Uh, it, it, it's not blockchain. Blockchain is great. But we keep conflating blockchain with the con. And I don't know how that can continue. I mean, the, this thing, all these different prices, like we put up XRP and Solana and Dogecoin. Those are all, I believe, cons. Oh, yeah, but not Enron or Theranos or Bear Stearns. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works, right? So we don't need to hear anything more from this uh, drunk borderline hangover guy. Uh, I don't know what it is. Drunk hangover, no sleep. But you, you can just tell he's, he's acting a little bit off the ball there. So check this out from Store Aldrity. Um, yesterday's Coindesk op-ed. I'm glad even the detractors recognize that the SEC's invitation to come in and register is like trying to take a Ford Model T into space. But if you are going to try to debunk Ripple's legal positions, at least understand them first. As it clearly states in our briefs, Ripple does not depend on a conclusion that XRP was purchased for use, uh, though, such as a, uh, those, though such a conclusion, as shown by Amici briefs uh, and the non-speculative evidence, would defeat the SEC's claims. Our actual arguments, uh, there is no contract for an investment between Ripple and any XRP holder uh, because the SEC cannot satisfy a single prong of the Howey test and Ripple concedes not a single prong. The SEC's reliance on garden variety ICO cases have no application here. The reason the SEC and detractors are trying to recast our arguments is they have no answer for the arguments we will actually make. All right. The SEC and detractors alike are literally all noise. The only answer that counts uh, is SDNY on the motions for summary judgment, and Judge Torres doesn't go for recast arguments geared towards deflection and not grounded in the law. So in reality here, guys, you know, the SEC, they are at the losing end of this case. The first few months, they were attacking Ripple. Last year, they have been attacking the judge. They have been going against what the judge is saying, being very disrespectful in the court of law, filing one sentence. I mean, no, one line responses hours before the deadline. Um, that, that's what I really love. Is what, Once I noticed the SEC starting to argue with the judge and not Ripple... That's when I started to understand the SEC is on the losing end here. And the fact that we have the him in documents, here, well, when I say we, I mean Ripple. And we and Ripple are not the same thing. Don't want the SEC to try to use that argument. But in a sense, we already have the him in documents. They are there. Ripple can see him. The judge can see him. We can see why favorites are being played. So the case is coming to an end. And now, as the case is coming to an end, all of a sudden you got this big, you know, FUD operation spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt. You're getting attacks from CNBC, Kramer calling XRP a scam. You got Coindesk coming out and, you know, always going against Ripple like they do. And it's kind of funny how that works. As the case is beginning of the end, as Ripple says the case is the beginning of the end, we filed our final briefs with final submissions. Um, now the FUD starts to kick in. Another thing, someone trying to spread FUD here, I mean, this is person's really irrelevant, but still, how did Ripple build such a loyal army with a chart like this? And they go just on the Google five-year XRP chart. And it's like, of course, you can kind of use any chart you want to push your opinion. I mean, you look at this five-year XRP chart, and to the surface level of someone just seeing this, they're like, oh, wow, wow, yeah, this does make sense. Why would they be so loyal? Because it just pumped one time, and it dumped, and it flatlined, it pumped a little bit, and flatlined again. But it's like you charts are a super perspective based thing. The reality of, you know, charts, charts are like a search engine. If you want to find something, you're going to find it. Go on TradingView, go to any asset class, any stock, any crypto, any commodity. You can create the chart to fit your narrative. And that's a very, you know, Achilles heel of becoming a day trader is charts are a search engine. If you're trying to find something, you can find it. So they post this chart here. Oh, how did Ripple build such a loyal army with a chart like this? Uh, well, yeah, if you get your, you know, brain dead ass off of, you know, mainstream media Google and actually get yourself to a weekly chart on Bitstamp that is showing the last 10 years, you can understand where the loyalty comes from. Because if you're just going to come out here and just show this, 
right? And then the problem is, looking at this chart, you actually get much more perspective of the, you know, dr like the dr like how dramatic these price movements have been. Because over here on this chart that she's showing, this is the Binance pump from 20 cents to 80 cents. It doesn't look like anything. But if you have some real brains and you look in, you can see this was 27 cents to 80 cents, which was 400% and damn near one week. And like Matt Hamilton says over here, who used to work for Ripple, not sure if he's working for Ripple anymore, but I know he used to. Uh, this is a chart of XRP, not Ripple. Two, you can pick whatever time frame to suit whatever narrative. Exactly. Couldn't be further from the truth. Over a long enough time frame, XRP is pretty much on par with Bitcoin. True. Uh, most people invested in XRP are interested in actual utility and not the Ponzi-nomics of something like Bitcoin. Get to the next one here, guys. Ripple advertising in the Wall Street Journal just a few days ago. All signs are pointing to the end of the SEC case, and we're going to get that Ripple IPO on the stock market, which is going to be crazy. Otherwise, why else would Ripple in, uh, in the U.S. if the main asset they use XRP is about to become a security? And think crypto is under your business? Think again. The world has changed, but finance hasn't changed with it. It's not fast enough, not efficient enough, not innovative enough. Can kind of say the same with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, if you've had enough of not enough, then you're ready for a new approach. You're ready for money that moves across borders in seconds, not days. You're ready for markets that never close. You're ready for central banks with advanced digital currencies. Holy shit, Ripple is putting this in an advertisement right now. You're ready for central banks with advanced digital currencies. The Ripple central bank talk over the last year has been an order of magnitude explosive. Because you think of like 2018, 19, 20, they really didn't touch on the central bank topic that much. But oh my God, over the last year or so, Ripple has been explosive in mentioning the central bank engagement. You're ready for a transformative era in finance. You're ready for crypto. Wow, guys, you really got to take that one in right there for what it is. You're ready for central banks with advanced digital currencies. That is a crazy one. And last one for today, guys. Um, I don't know exactly what program this is from but this is uh giancarlo markets former cftc chairman here's what he has to say about digital currency sovereign or non-sovereign some combination of the two the future of banking finance and money itself is going to be digital it is going to be token based it's going to be blockchain based the question is how to just as i did at the cftc let's not sit back and let this innovation pass us by let's engage with it Let's get the balance right between privacy and national stability and law enforcement. Chris. Wow. Well, the, something Gary Gensler needs to hear for sure. Well, guys, that's the news for today. But um, as I like to usually with the end of the videos, just kind of look at all of the price action of XRP. Take a nice deep breath and just realize where we are at in the cycle. If you guys remember one of those videos I posted recently. Um, talking about the local bottom touching one two three four times exploding over here local bottom one two three four i'm considering this four just because it's not the bottom bottom of the demand zone but it's the top end of the demand zone which is old all-time high so you got one two three four explosion one two three four explosion four times going down to historical local demand inevitably ends up xrp blasting off to the sky and keep in mind man we are holding a very very high level here do you notice how this zone we have not gone into this zone the historical bottom end demand zone for xrp has been conquered using the old all-time high as a launch pad and man Look at that weekly chart right there. XRP building up that strength. It's going to go for the gap fill. It's going to fill more gaps. It's going to fill more gaps. And before you know it, we're going to be into that dollar and some change XRP price. Monthly chart for more perspective there. And guys, thank you for tuning the video today. Everyone watching this video, you understand exactly where XRP is going. It is just a matter of time. And I'll see you guys in the next one.